I warn you now that if your cause is unjust, stay out of my way, because I am Ashok Vidal, and I will make sure even the gods regret crossing me. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, a.k.a. Hambar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Larry Correa's Son of the Black Sword. Son of the Black Sword is a 2015 novel by Larry Correa, first in the saga of the Forgotten Warrior, and the second novel I've read by the author. Ashik Vidal is an experienced soldier, and the story starts with he and his companion, Angra Vidal, the sentient sword, hunting a demon. He is a protector, a sort of wandering cop. He isn't very fun. <laughs> he takes law and honor very seriously. Things are very black and white to him, and obviously this is where the plot and character arc comes in. The sword itself is black and terrible, a relic passed down from his ancestors. It's, of course, similar to Stormbringer, Black Razor, Nightblood, etc., though it doesn't really speak like they do. It is the offensive part of his prowess. The other part is defense, that all protectors have the aid of the magical heart of the mountain, which heals them quicker than normal humans and makes them immune to poison, for example. The world isn't the somewhat typical medieval European-esque one, rather it is inspired by Southern Asia. For example, there is a caste, and those outside it are considered subhuman, untouchable. Uh, human, right, but not people. And demons live in the sea, having fallen to earth after the primordial war of the gods. In the distant past, the hero Ram Rowan united the tribes and dr drove them into the sea. Before this, there was there, there were several continents and peoples and nations. Now it seems the continent of Lok or Lok, I'm not sure how to say it, is known. Uh, and it's the only one, and it only one nation covers it. For example, whales are extinct as well. Um, there is a nearby island called Fortress, and known for its magics, technically not under the law of the nation. Uh, it sits off the southeast coast, like Tasmania off Australia, or maybe like an attached Indian subcontinent in Sri Lanka. Uh, there is no belief in an afterlife, and religion seems outlawed, though one sect that worships the forgotten seems popular enough, uh, but that's more of done in secret. Uh, magic is mostly like sorcery and sword and sorcery, which is to say it's evil as well. There is a large theme on actions and obedience. Uh, what is the law for? Uh, what do we do? Like, why do we do what we do? Uh, is it natural to be so ordered? Uh, there are some flashbacks present in the actual story. Uh, there are mysteries there, as the opening paragraph mentions the bloody hands of a child as if they are Ashik's hands. It feels very epic fantasy with big world-building ideas like, you know, an ancient past. It's not hidden from the reader like in many other series. In fact, the, the back blurb advertises as what happens after the War of the Gods. And while I'd say it's an epic fantasy, it has some sword and sorcery feel. In fact, Nick Sharps, uh, when reviewing the book for Elitist Book Review, said Ashik is a sort of protagonist to do Conan proud. And he isn't wrong. He's not a clonin by any means, but he has indomitable attitude and more with character progression as well. And he's got this interesting code of ethics that makes him very much someone you root for, even though he's not 100% what we'd call a good guy. Uh, this book is a page-turner. Uh, the plot is good, though a hundred pages, and I wasn't sure where it was going, as it felt all like set up. But Korea does do a great job of making it enticing and very easy to read. Eventually, we get other point of views besides Ashik's too. Uh, Grand Inquisitor Omond is one, and he is, you know, like, He's kind. Of, he's, he's your typical Inquisitor, right? Uh, he reminded me some of Galactica from First Law. Another character is Rada, who's an astute and bookish librarian from the Archivist Guild, essentially. We also have Keta, Keeper of the Names, uh, that you learn about, um, well, about the story as well. Jagdish, for example, is also an unlucky but stubbornly dedicated and honorable Rasaldar, which is a middling rank of the warrior ca cast. There's a great use of irony. There's very simple prose. It's fun and traditional, but also unique enough. Uh, it takes a minute before we know where we are going, but not as long as other books uh, or series. And it stays interesting the whole time. You could ask how such a system with the law at the top stays without being questioned even more, but I feel Korea probably did this on purpose. Why? I'm not so sure, but I'm figuring that out as I read through the rest of the books. In fact, I should clarify, this is a very engrossing series. While I'm sure there's some problems here as far as entertainment value goes, it's insanely high. And I read the next three books in the series, which are all that are out right now. There's four books um, within, like, I don't know, a week or two after reading this one. So I read them all very quickly because it was just that entertaining. So take that as you will. I don't do that hardly ever. So Liam from Liam's Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.